to another video. Hi. So if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you will know I've been in a flare since last week. My last video was filmed in my pajamas. Yesterday I woke up really sick, like with a cold. And it's not like the worst cold ever, but it was bad enough that it just made this flare worse and it's gonna make it so that it's gonna take longer for me to get better. So that means I'm like kind of not doing so good health-wise. Now we can start the video. So you've probably seen the title. Today's video is about sensory overload. This video is going to be broken down into three main parts. Okay, the first part is what is sensory overload and sort of what it is, what it means. The second part is why it affects people with fibromyalgia so much. And the third part is, as always in my videos, I try to include this in everything, is what can we do to make it better? Strategies to help it reduce the impact on our daily lives. So the first part of the video is what is sensory overload? Sensory overload is a very common problem in fibromyalgia and it's obviously a symptom that can have a significant effect in our daily lives and it can also keep us from doing a lot of things that we like. It can make you feel panicky, overwhelmed, uh, confused, scared, and it can result from a variety of stimuli and just things in general and it can actually vary from person to person obviously but it also varies from day to day and from like situation to situation so sensory overload overload yeah sensory you know when you say something so many times and it just starts sounding weird and like to me sensory overload is starting to sound weird sensory overload happens when you are getting more input from your senses then your brain can process and sort through it can be multiple conversations going on in a room flashing overhead lights or a loud party and they can all reduce the symptoms of sensory overload it's also commonly referred to as hypersensitivity or hypersensitivity to sensory input. So symptoms of sensory overload include, but are not limited to, difficulty focusing due to competing sensory input, extreme irritability, restlessness and discomfort, urge to cover your eyes or ears, feeling overly excited or wound up, then stress, fear, or anxiety about your surroundings, higher levels than usual of sensitivity to textures, fabrics, clothing tags, or other things that can be in contact with your skin, dry eyes, migraines, headaches, tension headaches, things like this. Uh, we know now what sensory overload is, but why does it affect people with fibromyalgia so much? I'm gonna leave a lot of links down below so you can go and look for yourself, but there's a lot of really interesting studies about this and about our brain in general. Uh, and if you want me to do like a dedicated video to a study that you think is really interesting, but you don't really understand the language and stuff, I can do that too, so let me know. Anyway, so hypersensitivity is believed to be a core mechanism of fibromyalgia. And it means that our bodies react strongly to all kinds of different input from noise, bright or flashing lights, crowds of people, strong smells, chaotic environment, and multiple things competing for our attention at once. I also find that it happens more severely and more often to me when I am flaring, having a worse pain day, and more fatigued than usual, or have a bad fibro fog day. A study in the archives of physical medicine and rehabilitation showed that people with fibromyalgia are a lot more likely to experience this symptom than regular people. Another study in the journal Pain Research and Treatment suggests that changes in our brain chemistry may be linked the sensitivity to stimuli and imaging studies have provided evidence of this altered response to sensations. It seems our brains have a hard time processing a lot of input at once and it has been suggested that this is caused by a dysfunction of the neurotransmitter serotonin. A lot of us have heard of serotonin, but in case you don't know what serotonin is, serotonin is a chemical nerve cells produce which sends signals between nerve cells. And although it is mostly found in our digestive system, it is also present throughout the central nervous system and it impacts every aspect of our bodies from our emotions to our motor skills to sleeping and our anxiety, uh, mood regulation, a bunch of things. Other researchers believe that we have a problem in our brains with what is called inhibition. Inhibition helps the brain filter out things that are unimportant. So if you get a phone call while you're watching TV, it should help your brain tune out the TV so you can focus on your phone call. Generally ignoring background noise, uh, it should also help ignore uh, repetitious noise or 
other things that might not need your attention. The lack of inhibition in people with fibromyalgia means we can't tune those things out. This leads to our senses bombarding our brains with information and our brains simply cannot handle it all. It's not that other people have less their senses pick up less things that their brain knows what to pay attention to and it's kind of like our brain doesn't know what to filter out so everything goes in is just overwhelmed with information. So that's already two options of what could be going wrong. Serotonin levels and our inhibition. I found a third study which is very interesting, but before we get into that one, we have to address a couple of things. This study actually found something that contradicts some of the information that we have already, but also kind of supports that information at the same time. It suggested that our brain is actually under-responsive to non-painful stimuli. And non-painful stimuli is understood as noise, sound, light, uh, noise and sound are the same, uh, noise, lights, smells, the things that make us feel sensory overload, uh, there shouldn't actually be painful to us. They actually found that our brain is under responsive to this kind of thing, so it doesn't make sense why it bothers us so much. That was their starting point. To understand this study better, or the findings of this study better, we have to know two things. This is obviously a different pattern to what we're used to seeing with pain because, as I've probably mentioned before, a lot of studies suggest that the nervous system in our brain and spinal cords are amplifying or over-responding to pain signals from our nerves and to just our nerves in general. This is what is believed to be what fibromyalgia is. Another piece of information that we need to know is that studies have also shown that our insula, which is the part of our brain that collects sensory input from all over the body, and decides what is important and what isn't, the insula is a lot more active in people with fibromyalgia than in people without. If something makes you feel unpleasant or is unpleasant to you, it's probably the insula telling you that. In the study that I wanna mention, and through MRI imaging, they found that basically there is a very slow initial processing of stimuli in the lower brain regions, which is then followed by a greatly accelerated response in the higher ones. This study made it clear that our pain levels and sensitivity to non-painful stimuli is related, but they didn't figure out how. All they could find was that basically whenever we, were, we are exposed to this kind of stimuli, our brain is at first under responding, so it responds less uh, intensely than other people. And then the afterthought is super accelerated and really exaggerated. When we have that sort of second reaction, we have higher levels of pain and the, the regions in our brain that show pain uh, were lighting up. Although they didn't determine why this was happening, it is a really interesting study and it's very interesting information. Why am I including this? It doesn't seem to be very a very big breakthrough, right? The reason why I gave you those two bits of information before about our uh, nervous system and our insula is that the insula is actually very involved in the autonomic nervous system, which is something that I've mentioned in another video it's about uh, temperature sensitivity. So in that video, I talk a little bit about the autonomic nervous system and how it affects our sensitivity to the heat and the cold. It's interesting because here it is again in another symptom, in another thing that we're talking about. So it's involved in the autonomic nervous system in the regulation of bodily functions. But the most interesting thing of all of them is the insula is actually believed to be the center of something called interoception. It's a sense that isn't very well known, basically helps us understand and feel what is going on in our bodies, like inside of our bodies. If you have bad interoception, you just like might not realize you're hungry and not realize you're tired or hot or cold or thirsty or hungry, you know, etc. The fact that our insula isn't working the way it should be. So sometimes it's probably most of the time working overtime, but also our brain it has so much stimuli, it doesn't know what to do with it. It might miss certain things. So sometimes you might not notice you're hungry or sometimes you might not notice you're cold, but other times you're a lot more cold than you think you should be. So if you are really fatigued and your insula is working overtime, you might be a lot more aware of like your heartbeat or something like that. They don't really know what the hell is going on. Obviously like everything, it's the only thing that I say in every single one of these videos is they don't really know what's happening. There's some suggestions, but they don't really know. It's interesting that the thing that is involved in so many aspects that don't work in our bodies is also, you know, 
it's just it's just interesting to me. I feel like I've rambled on too much about this, but like I just think it's a really interesting thing. We don't really know. These are a few studies. These are a few suggestions of why it might be happening or how. The end result is that you can't focus your attention on things that you really want to do or that you really enjoy doing or that are really important to you. It makes it harder to think. You may forget what you're doing or what you're saying and just keep forgetting your train of thought. Uh, mostly it makes it really hard for us to manage or navigate certain situations and certain circumstances and certain environments that may like overstimulate our senses or make us feel overwhelmed. There will be a different spectrum of reactions from just being a bit annoyed and a bit irritated and a bit like overwhelmed to you know full-on panic attacks. This is not something that happens to me super often. I do have sensory overload quite often. I have found a few coping strategies but I did have a panic attack earlier this year in a situation where I felt overwhelmed. Regardless of what kind of reaction you have it will definitely have an impact on your pain levels, on your fatigue levels, and if you have a full-fledged panic attack uh, it can actually cause overall flare-up of all of your symptoms. So we obviously want to avoid all of this as much as possible. Another obvious problem that comes from this is that we can develop fear to have panic attacks when we encounter situations that have triggered them in the past. This will obviously like make you anxious, it will worsen your symptoms because anxiety is like one of our worst enemies, but it also can lead to isolation, which we already are so isolated because of the nature of our condition. I have found a few things that work for me. Some of these things I have not tried and I have not like done them, but other things I have and I will tell you which. And I saw in a lot of websites that they say things like avoid your triggers. I don't think that's a good idea because avoiding just means that you are not living your life. It depends what the trigger is, obviously. But if it's like noise or something, you don't want to travel because of the noise, noise canceling headphones, you know, things like that. Like think of ways that you can still do things, but your own way. The first and most obvious thing that I always suggest is that you have a doctor that you can talk to, that you feel there is a uh, safe space to exchange information, exchange experiences, and to talk about what is going on with you. If this is something that is affecting you really severely, you have to talk to somebody about it. Also, they can obviously help you find a treatment that works for you, if, be it medication or massages or whatever it is but they can help you find a treatment that works for you and by finding a treatment that works for you, you are more likely to feel better and to be healthier and to be better and the better you feel, the less these kind of symptoms will impact you and like less often, etc. Point number two is being active. Like I said in my previous video, exercise really does help us a lot and I will also make a dedicated video about this. Uh, but exercise does really help us a lot. It's important to exercise gently but consistently. Another thing is uh, ventilating your house properly to avoid like smells that may be like triggering for you and that might be unpleasant. Like I said, considering noise canceling earplugs or headphones if you want to do things outside or if you want to like be at work, it could be something that's helpful. Uh, another thing that I have found that ha has helped me is taking care of my skin better and to try to make it a little bit less sensitive and less irritated. But another thing that I have found has really helped with, it, with my skin is taking cod liver oil, which is just like a fish oil. It has a lot of vitamin A and vitamin D, which are good for other things, but they're also really good for your skin and for your um, nails and hair and stuff. Uh, another thing obviously that I suggest is wearing comfortable clothes and clothes that don't like make you feel itchy or they're not heavy or too hot or too cold or whatever wearing comfortable clothes. Invest in sunglasses. This is really important. This is something that's really, really helped me. I have a few pairs of different sort of opacities and different like tints of sunglasses. So if it's a little bit more cloudy, I'll wear a lighter shade. And if it's really bright out, I will wear a different like set. It's just like I have a few to select from for different kind of situations. So that might be something that is worth considering if you have a lot of foot sensitivity. Something that's very, very important is setting boundaries. So if you are at a family event, if you are at a Christmas party, if you are at a work or whatever, and you can't handle the sensory input for some reason, you have to be strong and be like, okay, this is not okay for me. I can't handle this right now. I am sorry, but I can't do this right now. Another thing that I think is really important is creating a retreat, so a place that you you can go to that makes you feel more calm and better and just helps 
the senses relax and even if it's not like a specific place then maybe like specific things that help soothe you something that i find is really soothing when i have a migraine or when i have a pressure headache or when i'm really feeling really really overwhelmed is putting on David Attenborough's like nature documentaries that most of the time I just close my eyes and listen to his voice and I find that's really soothing and that really makes me calm down and I like to look at nature and at the trees and at the birds and like the animals and stuff and that really soothes me and makes me feel a lot more calm and a lot better another thing that really helps me like say I go to the mall which is something I really like doing and I'm feeling okay but then all of a sudden I start feeling really overwhelmed because there's like a really chaotic environment there's a lot of people there's a lot of noises there's a lot of things going on and my brain just is at the point where it's like I cannot take any more I find that playing like Pokemon Go or a game on my phone helps me like focus all of my energy and all of my like attention into just one thing and I find that helps me filter out everything else it forces my brain to use that filter that it doesn't know how to use you know what I mean uh, and another thing that I find helpful is when I feel I can't really concentrate I find that reading really helps me I know a lot of people find that it's the opposite way around but for me forcing myself to be focused in just one thing like a book because you have to be paying attention to it uh, it just helps me it makes it makes my brain like calm down because there's just like one thing so knowing what makes you feel overwhelmed and what makes you feel like sensory overload is really important to avoid it or to like make changes in your life to um, be able to still like enjoy your life but without having that stuff and it also will help you navigate situations a bit more safely and get yourself out of situations before they become uh, harmful to you and another point that I also want to make is that it's really important that your partner or like somebody really close to you or the people who are really close to you know your triggers and know things that make you feel sensory overload because not only is it helpful if they don't cause them on you it also is helpful that if you are in a situation together they can maybe protect you from them or help you like get out of a situation that leads me to, on to the next point which is practicing breathing exercises and knowing how to calm yourself down how to like talk yourself out of a like panic attack or whatever i know it's not that simple okay if you have anxiety and i have anxiety and i've had it for a long time i know it's not always that simple but i also know that training yourself for things not to be triggers is really helpful and it does work it obviously takes a lot of practice what i'm trying to say is that like just managing your anxiety it will help with everything else in your life in general but it's really important with fibro because stress is such a like harmful thing to us um but anyway i hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to leave it a like and a comment and consider subscribing to my channel because it will make my day for sure that is all of the things that i have to say thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye